Hello and welcome to our monthly real estate market update for the month of November 2023. We cover Western Cook County, DuPage, Kane, Lake County, and McHenry. So today we've got a lot to cover and I think you find it very interesting. The theme for today really is going to be where's the real estate market headed in the longer term? And we're going to look at it from interest rate perspective, from affordability, from inventory, and you know how all those things kind of all play together anyway. So we've got uh, a lot to cover in this. So we'll get started. But first, time to say, roll that intro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the usual housekeeping, please like this video, please subscribe, and please share it with your friends so it gets out in front of the widest audience possible. First subject we want to get into is interest rates. So um, current national average on interest rates on 30-year fixed is 8.08% and on the 15-year fixed it is 7.28%. So you can see interest rates are kind of floating around where they've been the last few weeks. Um, don't see any real big changes coming in that. Um, the Fed meets next week. Th there's, it's anticipated that there's going to be no hikes coming out of those meetings. Um, they've signaled uh, over the last few weeks that there's not going to be any kind of rate hikes and this it would be a huge shock to all the markets if um, they actually did drop some kind of rate hike on us at this point. So it's really, uh, it's almost assured that that's not going to happen. Um, the next meeting in December, we'll see. I'm going to think that they're probably not going to make any hikes at that point either. Inflation data kind of running, you know, kind of neutral. It's it's down slightly this month, um, the, the data that was just released, but uh, it's not getting anywhere near the 2% target rate that they're looking for. And uh, towards the end of the year, inflation starts spiking up a little bit, beginning of next year. Um, I... Kind of under the feeling that there's going to be at least one more rate hike the beginning of next year 25 basis points um, we'll see but um you know there's other things that could come into play that could make that uh, where they won't do that but the inflation is still running high and it, and it uh, starts going up at all i, I believe that's what's going to happen don't anticipate that there's going to be any relief from these interest rates until the earliest I would say is probably next July and at this point um, it may be longer than that we may be going an entire year uh, with interest rates kind of just sitting where they're at and the Fed said that they're happy with uh, you know comfortable I don't know everybody's happy with that but they're comfortable with doing that if they're seeing progress with inflation and uh, you know if they don't have to raise any higher but we're going to sit with these high rates um, for a lot longer of a period of time. Um, so the one thing that could come into play that could cause interest rates to come down sooner than later, there's some data that's starting to show that there's a little weakness in the economy coming up, um, especially big ticket items, um, appliances, automobiles, uh, sales are starting to slow down in that um, pretty well. So uh, imports are way down, uh, our imports from China are down, I believe it's like 45%. So Things are, you know, the, the consumer is starting to slow down. And this, uh, especially bigger ticket items, is an early indicator, possibly, I mean, it has been in the past, of a recession coming. So if we go into recession second quarter next year, uh, that's probably going to put a big dent in inflation. That may do the work for the Fed, or that may be, the recession may be the work that they've been trying to achieve. So, um you know, then at that point, you can see them starting to lower interest rates a lot sooner. We'll see. Um, hopefully, it doesn't look, you know, so far, but who knows. The indicators are that, you know, we do go into recession. It's not going to be a real deep recession, and it's not going to be real long. So, probably be some job losses with it, but it doesn't, right now, it doesn't look like it's going to be a real bad recession. So, the long term for interest rates, of course, you know, where we're at now, historically, you know, six percent, six and a half percent was a good mortgage rate. Going back, you don't have to go back that far, and that's really what it's what it's been historically, um, average. So, the, you know, the rates that everyone's gotten used to, you know, 
four percent or below you know even below three uh, percent we're not going to see that again i mean we're just if we get down to five and a half percent that's going to be pretty good i don't i don't see us ever getting down to four percent again yeah it's great for somebody who got a three percent refi or a three percent mortgage but it, it's not it's not sustainable it's not how the market and how the economy is going to be able to function normally so we want to get the real estate market and everything else back to what we consider normal and normal is going to be interest rates in the fives and low sixes so i want to get into the subject of affordability here for a little bit affordability there's so many factors that go into that i mean mortgage rates you know that affects affordability the actual home price affects affordability you know there's a lot of other things that i'm not going to touch on but property taxes and a lot of things really um there's all kinds of things that really go into like the overall picture of what affordability is but um the one thing i wanted to talk about and i saw an interview with somebody who um it kind of went into this data and it's i, th I found it very interesting so um right now everybody feels that home prices are way overvalued and and so, you know, to, to an extent they are, and uh, that certainly affects affordability, especially for, uh, well, for everybody, but really for first-time home buyers, especially because you have no equity in an existing home that you can use to leverage for a new home. So um, it re really hits first-time home buyers harder than anybody else. So the one thing that uh, was, was brought up was that in the 70s, historically, you know, so let me back up a little bit. A good measure of, of home price or home affordability, not affordability, but of cost of a home is to look at it from a square footage perspective. Because, you know, you can say, well, homes are more expensive now. Well, what does that mean? Are, are homes the same as they were back then? Well, in a lot of cases, they're not. So um, if you look at in the 70s and you carry that data all the way through to now, if you look at price per square foot adjusted for inflation they're really not that far off now from what they've always been even going back to the 70s per square foot home price is not that much different once you adjust for inflation so the big difference between now and then was that in the 70s the average home that was sold was 1500 square foot today the average home size is 2500 square foot so of course the average home today, if you just say the average home, it's going to be significantly more expensive because it's significantly bigger. Mm. People are looking for larger homes. So one of the things I find very interesting is that even though people are looking for larger homes nowadays, the average family size has gotten a lot smaller since the 1970s. Back then, the average family had three children that had gone down uh, even before the pandemic, it was 3.2 children. Now, it's down to 1.6, which is not even a replacement level for our population. So it may be, especially for first-time home buyers again, you might need to rethink, do I need four bedrooms, do I need three bedrooms for when I have one child? I mean, do we need two and a half baths? You know, back then in the 70s, it was two bedrooms, maybe three small bedrooms, and one bathroom. Now, I'm not saying go back to one bathroom, but two bathrooms, three bedrooms, or, you know, to get started in the market, get yourself building equity, get into a home. You know, if you have one, one child at this point, two bedrooms, one bath, get you going, get you building equity, it may be time that people need to, are going to have to start looking at that. I mean, when things are unaffordable, you have to look, make compromises. It's, uh, it's just how it is. So another factor that really affects affordability is the inventory situation we're in. So low inventory, higher demand, even though demand is way down, inventory is the lowest it's ever been. So, you know, this is going to drive, keep prices higher, drive them higher. So there's only so many ways really to solve this, this situation and none of them are gonna be great. Um, one is that we get a lot more sellers come into the market which through foreclosures or a lot of things where they're selling but they're not buyers. And then newer buyers will have a chance uh, to get lower prices, more inventory prices will come down if, if there's a significant amount of inventory 
um, and less demand going at that inventory, which right now is not the situation. Um, I don't recall we've ever been in a situation where we have rising interest rates, especially rising as fast and as high as they have. And on top of that, we still have rising home prices. So it doesn't really look like that's going to be a viable option or it's not really an option, but it would be something that occurs that's going to bring inventory back into line. Uh, even if we have a recession, a job loss recession, what, what are we going to lose? Two million jobs? Well, there's still 36 million people working. So it, it's not going to be enough to really put a big dent in, it's not going to put a dent in demand because people who are working, you know, they may slow down on some of their home buying, but there's such pent up demand that even, even at that, people are going to, to still buy homes. So any homes that would come on the market are going to get snapped up. The other way to get more inventory is going to be new home construction. Well, new home builders are, they can build more houses probably faster than they are now, but they're never going to because it's not in their interest to build as many homes as they can possibly build and flood the market because you know, this has an impact on their bottom line. Of course, creating excess inventory is going to drive the home prices down. It's going to drive their profitability down. And the way things are and the way things work in home building, they're going to build enough homes that they can keep home prices where they can make a good profit. And so to expect that there's going to be this, this huge amount of home new home construction that's going to really drive the inventory back up, it, it's really not in the cards. So there's a lot of talk about, well, when interest rates come down, there's going to be a lot of people that put their homes on the market because they need to move, they want to move up bigger home, they want to downsize, they want to move to a new location. But right now, they're sitting on a low interest rate mortgage and they're just not going to do anything until rates come down. Well, that's true. When rates come down, the move up buyers, there's going to be a lot of people putting their homes on the market or a significant amount of people putting them on the market nonetheless. But the one thing is if you're a move up buyer, well, you're a buyer. Yes, you put your home on the market, but you're also going to take a home off the market. That doesn't add to inventory in any way. And once interest rates come down, you're going to have a flood of first time home buyers move into the market. So any little excess that would be in there in inventory is going to get taken up and then some. What is this going to lead to? Well, higher home price, less inventory, more buyers, higher prices. So really, there's not a good answer for this inventory crisis that we're having. I, it, this can continue on for a long, long time. There's not really anything out there right now that looks like that's going to change that. So the housing market is will stabilize and will kind of normalize at some point, but it's probably going to normalize a little bit different than it used to be. Eventually, some of this uh, pent up demand will get satisfied and we'll move on that, but this is going to be years. And so anybody that's thinking that there's going to be a, a shorter term fix for the inventory issue and that's going to bring prices down does not look like that is going to happen. I mean, there's just not really anything that that would be evidence to that. So what's the answer to low inventory and driving higher prices? Well, right now there's not a good answer. It really does not look like this situation is set to change anytime soon and it could easily continue on for years. I mean, right now we're in the fall market going into winter. Prices have dropped some. They may drop a little bit more. Not a huge drop but really it could possibly be the best time to buy right now because come spring more buyers in the market prices are going to continue to go up. There's no evidence that that's not going to be like that. So there's the old adage when's the best time to buy real estate? Now. That's the answer. And it's because real estate has its ups and downs, but eventually it always goes up. If you hold if you know if you're looking to buy and sell in a year or two, well, you can easily get stuck. You might you could end up underwater. But you know, if you're in it for the long term, five, ten years, you're almost always gonna make money. I mean, even people who bought at the height before the bubble burst, you know, 2008 they've been underwater for a long time but now I mean, home prices are up 50 percent in a lot of places they're well they're well above water at this point so you know it's, if you're in it for the longer term you know now is probably a good time to buy the main thing to consider is that when you take out a mortgage you buy a house now make sure that you can afford it 
that if something happens, you can continue on, that you know, you don't get yourself overextended. Things get slow, you know, if, if you feel like you're safe in your job or you can find another job, you've got enough significant savings put away that you can weather a little bit of a storm. You know, now is really as good a time to buy as any. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, please leave a comment below if you want to hear us talk about anything else, other subjects. If you want to make any comments on what I talked about today, you want to have a discussion of some of the points that we made, let us know. See you next month. Thank you.